Hey guys, welcome back to Arsenal Korean Mode FIFA 22 and today we'll be start off looking at the Youth Academy. Apparently right now we don't have the urge to sign anybody plus the number of players, the number of intakes we have, it's not quite a lot apparently because I don't know, for this Korean Mode or for this, this year FIFA, it's just really hard to sign good players or at least having a large influx of you players into the academy i don't know if it's the case for you guys if you guys play uh, fifa 22 career mode as well but yeah as i said i don't have any plans for youth players in the future or in the near future at least because based on the squad we have i'm pretty satisfied plus we don't need to do a lot of like rotational changes because the number of uh the number of uh, competitions that we are still in are pretty limited yeah, right now we have the FA Cup and also the um, and also the Premier League and Carabao Cup and European football are not on our, uh, not in our reach. So I'm not particularly too worried about that. Plus this career mode, it's it's probably trying to be a little bit more realistic if if I can with the number of players being signed, no matter their prices are. But you know, trying to get it done. That's basically my point. So uh, even though we have a very young a uh, very young goalkeeper, very uh, looking very nice as well, based on his overall so far overall and also his potential. That is Trees Paul Wells, but uh, with the signing of Neto, not quite sure if we have a chance for um, for for Paul Wells to actually shine at this point. Maybe not, but we will see in the near future. And right here, we're playing against Everton at home. Uh, who remembers the Everton? The good old Everton. Karimo back in like what five years ago and we are playing against them right now despite conceding the first goal very early in the game we answer one back with Odegaard scoring for, for for some reason Odegaard has been scoring a lot of goals in comparison to Lacazette who remembers uh, like for the first few episodes Lacazette keeps scoring goals a lot of goals too and all of a sudden Odegaard is actually catching up in Lacazette goals tally which is pretty which is pretty interesting based on what well of course Odegaard is not that type of player that will score goals but giving you constant assists or pre-assist people would say but right now he's actually contributing goals as well now uh, I feel like our our wingers are not particularly scoring a lot of goals for some reason so having an other source of uh, goal scores are very important as well which is like Odegaard right there just scores another goal in the previous episode you know he, he scored hat trick as well so so i'm not particularly too 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 afraid that we couldn't score any goals and right here like i said could have a chance to take the lead right there but then something is just off i feel like something is off in our game or in the spirit of the game because in the last game against liverpool we have so many shots they are just just tiny bit away from scoring the goal and we couldn't score a goal and and then Liverpool bite us, beat us, and then here comes Evident. We couldn't score that goal from Lacazette and all of a sudden everything just changes right there. Then Everton score one and we try to get one back, we just couldn't, and just like that, we lost to Everton. Two to one at home. And again, as I said, we have we have a lot of chances, but we're not taking them. And I'm afraid this is what I call the snowball effect. Feels like it's a snowball effect, isn't it? Losing to Liverpool. And then right now, well, actually, no. The snowball effect starts back in Chelsea. Even though we beat both of the teams, but it was a very, it's a very hard-fought teams in the end. Very hard-fought spirit, uh, uh, spirit. But I would say, yeah, Liverpool game kind of started after all. Missing one chance and then continuing losing the game the rest of the game and right there in the last game evident one main chance one main chance and then after that uh liverpool not liverpool Ever everton bite us in the tail both sides of the mary side have scored or beat us uh, uh beat us like back to back not very fun but we are well i don't want to say this but we are out of the fa cup which means at this point, the only focus we have for a silverware, potential silverware, is actually the Premier League. But losing to Liverpool in the lit, in, in the last last game, that pretty much sums up everything. And at this point, it's really hard to predict whether if we still have the chance in the title race or not. 
well, it is going to be very tough with, with Liverpool and the amount of fixtures or the number of fixtures that we have um, remainder in the season is going to be a very important one as well. So back here, again, we are playing against Watford at away from home, scoring a very early goal and then conceding two consecutive goals. And of course, that pretty much sums up our defense at one point. I'm not saying our defense are really bad, but it can be very, very inconsistent that sometimes there are a lot of like, op like open gaps between our defenders and that's how the opposition actually took advantage of that. And that's probably the reason why we're conceding goals. And right there, right after conceding the second goal, we scored a second goal with Alexander Isak. A very nice build-up play starting from pretty much the middle of the pitch. And then here comes the, the last the last few minutes of the first half. And here comes Martin Odegaard. Passes in the middle to Rabiot. What a great play right there. Just literally one-touch football into Alexander Isak and set it off to Rabiot. But it was unfortunate how we couldn't get a certain goal as well. And we might have a chance here. Emil smith row dribbling around everybody. Take a shot, but good save by the goalkeeper. Um, I'm, very, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very surprised Ben Foster's not in goal today, to be honest. 63 minutes in. And then, yeah, I think this is the type of defending that I want to talk about. It's m most likely is, it's more like I'm trying to predict where the the the, uh, the the player goes, like the offensive player goes, and somehow I always guessed the wrong way. And that's how they always have space in the middle. And right there, we have to, we just have to concede a very scrappy goal. Looking at the replays, actually went through <laughs> went through a Ramsdale armpit. Could have easily saved that. But again, this year's FIFA, the goalkeeper can be very good. And at the same time, it can be really, really scrappy. And just like that, um, Ramsdale has been phenomenal throughout the whole season. Until that, until that goal pretty much determines our fate in this season or, or our form for the past few games. And then Gabriel right there scores his first goal of the season. Finally, we score a goal from a corner kick, uh, which I don't really, really often say that a lot. But it has been a struggle for some for some reason. Couldn't really couldn't really score any goals from from corner kick, and that's how we end the game three three. A very disappointed a very disappointing game after all because we just keep conceding a lot of goals, but at the same time missing some of the few important chances as well, and we almost like replicate the real life score line like three two, but. Well, what a score a goal more, and Pepe has successfully converted to a right winger. And I did mention about Pepe in the past where not sure if he still has the future at Arsenal because, again, I think back in two, two, two FIFAs ago, FIFA 20, he was really good. Um, apparently has the potential to be special or at least hitting 88, 89 rated. But for the past two, three years after arriving at Arsenal, he just hasn't been performing. And I thought last season in the last few games he has been scoring quite a lot of goals i thought okay you know what he it's it maybe it's for him to time to shine but turns out it was it it's not it guys it's not it and right here the final game of this three game episode we have aston villa away from home and who who remembers uh who remembers we play against aston villa of course a very hard fart game in in real life and somebody asked what Gabby Abanaho and also Ash Ashley Young complains that we celebrate too much. Really? I mean, the reason why we celebrate is because the team is very young. And our chance of climbing to top four is getting closer. Plus, we have a very, very rough last like five, five, six years. And of course, right now, we have a chance to go back to European football. How could we not celebrate? So you know what? I'm going to take it out on them or out on this game. And right there, we scored two goals already. And Le Aston Villa couldn't really get a touch to us until in the 37 minute, Eric Bailey right there. Just, just again, my defensive problem where I just couldn't really tuck in to any of the players and allow the offensive players to actually turn very easily. Just like that. Could have prevented again. But I know my defensive ability in FIFA is not the brightest. Try my best still. But uh, but it is what it is. Trying to score as many goals as possible. That's why I keep emphasizing the amount of chances that I missed. And right here, 
uh, Alexander Isak go through the defender, but I try to chip it over Martinez, but Martinez is a good player. And we lose the ball right here. Um, and then, yeah, we just make a lot of mistakes at the back so far. And Rams are have to clean up our shit, <laughs> literally. And we beat Aston Villa 2-1, a very, very tight game. A very tight game overall, but uh, it it would have been a huge problem. Uh, I mean, we are still in the we are still definitely in the title race, but it would have been a big problem if we if we somehow lose a point, lose two points here at the Villa Park. So, um, but thank God that didn't happen. Instead, we continue. Um, we we kind of continue our way through, I guess. And right here, we are trying to change the formation just a little bit. Uh, this is a formation that I'm trying to stake stick with throughout the whole season or remainder of the season where uh it is going to be a classical 4-3-3 as usual but this time parte it's playing at the number at the number six row i guess uh central defensive midfielder and rabio playing on the left hand side and uh, going uh, rabio playing on the left hand side going up and down and Martin Odegaard will be operating on the right-hand side, central attacking midfielder. So it is going to be a little bit different. And again, right there, uh, Sammy Laconga, it's the, pretty much the successor of um, of Partey. So he'll be switching to CDM and ESR will be going back to left winger, which is I find it very funny because I really don't know where I should put him. But in the end, um, everything will work out which means we have to find a new central attacking midfielder in the next season so thank you guys for watching like this video subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in a bit